Hey guys, Ray from Lovey RV. So I've had my Starlink internet satellite dish now just about a little over a month, so I thought I'd come back with an update for you. Um, and also, uh, later in this video, I'll take it uh, with me in the truck and we'll try some portable tests just to see how far I can go away from my address and if it will work. Like this right now in the beta part of the the launch you're you're assigned an address where it will work and you're not you know you're not supposed to like take it around and travel with it it just won't work um you're, you're assigned i guess certain satellites that come along and if you go out of your what they call the cell it's supposed to stop working but just out of curiosity i thought i'd, I'd take it a few spots because people have asked you know can you move it anywhere so anyway the update let's get to the update um i got my first bill the other day uh, they gave me the first month after the shipping date for free. So it was shipped February 18th, and then March 18th, I got my first bill. And it was $129 Canadian, plus here we have general services tax and provincial services tax, for a total of $144.48. Uh, currently, U.S., that's about $115 in U.S. dollars. Uh, weather, how's it set up to weather? Well, it handles the wind and rain and cloud very well. Barely notice a difference. Um, I, we've had sustained storms, winds of 60 kilometers an hour, which is about 40 miles an hour, with gusts of 90 kilometers an hour, which is about 55 miles an hour, and it was fine, no problem at all. Uh, the only time it weather caused a problem was we got a little bit of a spring snowfall, and it was very heavy, wet snow that wiped out reception for about 20 minutes until actually the dish powered up and drew more energy and actually melted it away and then re reception came back. So that was pretty cool. I could actually see the, the wattage increase. It went up to almost 200 watts, I think, and and ran like that until it had got reception back. Um, speeds, speeds, people are always curious about speeds. Well, we basically get consistent speeds of somewhere between 50 to 150 megabits per second downloads and about 15 to 25 megabits per second upload switch, so pretty good. Um, last few days, we had an automatic firmware update that I noticed, and suddenly the max download speeds that I saw increased to the low 300 megabits per second range. Just amazing. Like you can download a gigabyte file in no time. I go to download something like a PDF that's 100 megabytes and I click it and it's down. And I don't even see anything spinning <laughs> in the download meter. Um, I recently experienced a few days of lower speeds and some downtime as much as a half hour to two hours in a day. During that time, there was a message on my account page and in the Starlink app that stated, your area is currently experiencing intermittent service. Our team is investigating. So this is a beta offering right now. And they said, you know, you're going you're gonna to have some downtime while we play with the system, upgrade softwares, move satellites around, that sort of thing. But it only lasted a day or so, and then it was back to the, the normal speeds I've been getting. Uh, over the last month, I've only had about three or four times that video on services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, or YouTube has buffered with, you know, how spinning wheels that aggravate you so much. So much better than our previous so-called premium Wi-Fi service from the campground. Uh, you go to a Netflix show and it generally loads instantly. You don't even see a spinning wheel. Although complex websites don't load particularly fast, as many are making a lot of web server calls and small downloads per page. So speed isn't really as important as, as latency. So I find the Starlink latency is usually around 20 to 40 milliseconds, just okay. So the initial page loads of sites like Facebook, for instance, aren't super snappy, but acceptable. Still light years better than the old satellite internet. And RVers, okay, so this isn't really set up for RVers yet at all, unless you're planning to sit in one spot for a long time. Because you've, if you order it right now, um, and you were to get it right now, there's no guarantee when you can actually move around with it. Um, there are sort of rumors that, that you're going to be able to update your address in the future, or they may even come along with a mobile offering. So um, I would just be really super happy if they would allow me to update 
update my location either by GPS coordinates or an address and so I could get somewhere go on maybe a web interface and put in the new coordinates and bang and have service but um, it appears that is hinging on Starlink getting many more satellites launched to get coverage over all the areas of the country. Uh, currently it also needs a relatively clear view of the sky to work as it is tracking moving satellites. It's not like there's one in uh, one satellite that stays in the same place all the time in the sky so you need quite a, a big sky so that's a significant negative for our viewers and that may improve as more and more satellites are placed in orbit we'll have to see um, power is another thing my power tests show the Starlink's average drain is 100 watts so if it runs 24 7 that eats up 2400 watts which is equivalent to roughly two fully charged one hour at one 100 amp hour lithium batteries or four of the the old lead acid batteries so for boondocking that's quite the power suck but the addition router can be shut down and turned on with no harm to them at all so you could save power by turning it on and off uh, the starlink routers range covers the whole our whole rv inside no problem and nearby outside but is very basic and there's actually no admin screen to it at all uh, I've seen I've heard some people are using third-party routers with success but I haven't really needed to do so so I haven't played around with that uh, so far my streaming video upload tests have been good with no problem uploading HD quality streams to YouTube but obstruction glitches and beta down time could be an issue for people that need to do video conferencing like zoom or Skype if you want to take a deeper dive into Starlink and RVing, I recommend this video by Chris at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. Uh, he's put out this video March 10th of all the current uh, state of things with Starlink and how it relates to RVing and the pros and cons right now as he sees them. Good video. And then also you can go to the Starlink on Reddit and they have a really good uh, FAQ on everything and it keeps and they keep updating it also it's a very good uh, forum there's uh, people beta testers in there posting their speeds and talking about it all the time and then I did uh, contact Starlink support and they replied we are working to provide this option in the near future but for now you can only we can only offer the service at the intended location as Starlink continues to launch satellites and the network reaches full saturation, the ability to install and use your Starlink on an RV will likely become possible. So that's good news. Okay, so we'll grab the dish and a power box and uh, head down the coast and uh, test the old Starlink at a few locations, see how far it will work to. Okay, first stop down at a Willow Point here and success. Got about, uh, I think, 15 so megabits per second download and about 22 upload, but it connected pretty well within uh, two minutes. Dish came up and found the satellites. So we'll continue on a little further down the road. Okay, now we're down at Shoreline Park, a little further down the coast. Just getting her all set up again. So I just plugged it in. It's just powering up you can see there it's going flat and it takes a minute before it kind of points towards the satellites that are sort of up in the north that way anyway what I'm using here is I have my Himson uh, portable power box here plugged in with AC and then I'm running the brick power brick here and then it's running the dish through 100 feet of cable here and then there's the Starlink router it's also plugged in and then I can use my app once it sets up here so we'll just wait for the dish to uh, figure itself out hopefully we're not too far away now so I gave it a good 15 minutes and no luck the debug screen on the app says uh, not connected dish isn't connected so Maybe we'll move back a little further back up the coast in between these two spots and uh, see if we'll see if we can get a connection a little closer. Okay, so we moved back a little closer and we did get a connection. The dish woke up and pointed, but uh, the connection's a little slower, about 4.5 megabits per second download and only one point something upload, but it is is working here. 
Well, I decided to try one more place to test. This is an Elk Falls parking lot. It's kind of a clearing in the forest, so not too many obstructions around. And uh, I'm actually getting a good connection here, about 45 megabits per second down and about uh, 20 or so up, so not too bad. Well, there you go. Long story short, if you stray anywhere away from your address, the speeds drop pretty quick. And after, in my experience, after 11, uh, 11 miles, I lost connection. So that can vary depending on the geometry of the satellites and the cell you're in. But anyway, I, I sure hope that uh, down the road, this is gonna be allowed to go mobile because I think it's gonna be a real boon for our viewers, you know, a lot of times you're not in trees like we go to the southwest and a lot of times there's no trees at all and i'd sure love to be out in the middle of the desert throw this on the rv and get super fast internet anywhere we are so i'll continue testing it we're going to be here till at least september and it's going to be on the rv so i'll continue testing it and maybe report back after the summer and let you know how it's gone till next time ray from loveyourv.com thanks for watching everyone cheers folks